Welcome back. Now, growing debates online are calling for an artificial intelligence company to release a text generating program it deemed too dangerous to make public. The program, developed by the company OpenAI, can write coherent and credible stories just like human beings. And the creators fear bad actors would use a program to whip up deceptive, biased, or abusive language at scale. Now, OpenAI's co founder and CTO, Greg Brockman, joins me now from San Francisco. Greg, thank you so much for joining us. Um, some people are saying release it. At this moment, would you even consider releasing GPT-2, your AI text generator? Uh, so what, what we're working on right now is a process for responsible disclosure of this model. And so the way that we think about it is this model has very positive applications. Uh, and so we're talking to fiction authors, we're talking to researchers, figuring out how we can get this technology into their hands, uh, while also making sure that we're able to keep it out of the hands of malicious actors. And you know, it's not just about this model, right? That we're, we're kind of at the cusp right now of systems that are powerful, that don't feel like toys anymore, that can really write text, that can really affect society and the world. And it's really important that as these models get more powerful, uh, that we have a process in place that's accepted by the community for how to decide when to release and when not to. Got it. So you're trying to work on your AI right now to make sure that it can be used in positive ways, not in destructive ways. Is that right? Uh, so so that, 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 that's right. And I think that you know the, the, te the technology itself is is in a good place uh, and it's really a question of how do you make sure that the people who are using it are using it in in the, in the right way uh, and so i think that it's all about bringing the stakeholders to got the it. table having conversations and, and getting into the right people's hands got it we understand the dangers that your technology poses you know ai that could mimic text that could mimic uh, a reporter's work it could be part of a fake news campaign etc but what makes it different from let's say filters or Photoshop or deep fake, stuff that's already out there and the public is aware of it so they can, in a way, inoculate themselves and know if something is, is not quite right. Uh, so I think that these things are all very related. And so for generating yeah. text, uh, the, the, you really have uh, a, a, uh, a totally new capability uh, in terms of, you know, we've always had humans who can write text, can write fake news, uh, and can, can uh, generate all sorts of interesting content. But we've never had AI that can actually help humans create new, new content as well. And so I think of it as a new dimension on, uh, on, on generation of, of, uh, of, of new content. Uh, so I think that one, it's it's a new thing that that is coming down the pipe. Um, but I think that, that it's absolutely the case that it's important for society to be educated about the fact that we yeah. are going to have AIs that are going to be more capable. And you can combine all of these different ways of generating content. For example, you can have uh, both images and you can have stories, you can have fake videos, you can really uh, generate generate the whole thing. And it's both a beautiful thing in terms of the potential upside of, of uh, you know, think about all the fiction that we can write, um, but it's also a thing that we should approach with caution. Yeah, and, and that's, the, that's why we need to hear from you and other developers and, and to have that education to understand what it is we're dealing with here. You know, we know that it's deceptive, but how destructive is it? Is this something more destructive than just talking about software and Photoshop and deepfakes, et cetera? Is this something akin to weaponry? You know, is AI development turning into an arms race where like weapons, missiles, et cetera, um, you need to have controls in place and to coordinate a response? So, so we're not there yet, but we are getting, but it's hard to know when we will get close. And what we know about AI development is that it moves quickly, that the amount of computation that goes into creating these models is increasing at a very fast rate. And so what we can see is we can see these models that are on the cusp where there are arguments for why you might want to release them, why you might not want to. And that that's why there is controversy, right? That, that people are saying, well, these models aren't quite at the point where we definitively should not have them out. And we actually agree with that. But what we are concerned about is looking forward and saying, how do we make sure that we have a process and a debate in place that really works so that when we have these models that we know really can have negative applications, it can really affect people negatively, that we've already worked through all these corner cases. Got it. Greg Brockman of OpenAI, thank you so much for joining us this day. Take care.